My 2018 favourite song. I'm not gonna lie, that took me fucking ages to make that song, and I thought it was gonna kill me. I almost bailed on it, but then, but then Ben helped me out, so like with some guitar parts, and it kind of rebuilt, rebooted it for me, and I was like, yeah, okay. Those were some of my favourite things of 2018. Um, I'm going to now elaborate a little bit more on these items, and also I've got a ton of other stuff that I want to show you. This is just like random shit that I have loved throughout 2018. There are products, there are films, there are cleaning things, there are songs, etc. that I think, oh, it might interest you, it might not, but this is this is what I have been loving last year. And also I'm very sorry at the lateness of this video that the, I had to nail this song and it was taking a while. So anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna try and go in some kind of order, like starting with the song order and then go to the other things. So the first thing in the song, was my Dr. Martin shriver boots. I, I used to have a pair of Pascal Dr. Martins in black and I don't know what happened to them. If I'm honest, if I'm honest I think I lost them at a festival. Didn't immediately replace them because I didn't want to, I didn't feel the need to, I wasn't really craving wearing Dr. Martins, I, had, I didn't miss them. And then this year I started to miss having Dr. Martins. Doc Martins, Dr. Martins, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> as much as I wanted a pair, I wasn't too keen on the idea of having like the classic style, style, classic style boot anymore. I wanted something with a little bit more like, like platform, a little bit more of a chunky sole to it. And I saw these ones and I was like, oh my God, Jesus Christ. They look a bit slimmer as well. They're probably not, but they are there. But they've got a nice little heel there, um, a nice chunky sole with like a good cleat on the bottom there. And I just fell in love with these. I feel like when I would wear my Pascals, as much as I loved them, I did feel, because I'm short, I've got short little legs, that I felt really, like, <laughs> in them. Because they're so flat and, like, chunky. I just, I just didn't feel my best in them. Because they've got a little bit of lift. Because they've got a little bit of something on the bottom. I don't feel so small and bad. I kind of, the little, the little ever so slight lift makes my legs feel a little bit longer. And a little bit, mm-hmm. Um, like, I wear them with jeans, wear them with a skirt. I wear them with shorts. Big fan of Shriver. The other pair of shoes, other than Converse, because Converse are just default favourite shoe ever, um, these guys, I got these from Topshop. Again, later on in the year, but I've worn them so much. They're absolutely filthy, like they've got loads of scuffs on. But who'd have thought white cowboyish kind of boots would be my jam? And there's something different about a white boot. And something just makes me feel really sassy in these white boots. Like, I feel like I should be singing, these boots are made for walking, like, all day long when I wear them. I feel really 70s, really 60s, 70s wearing these boots. And I feel like I should just be walking around, strutting my stuff. These particular boots, um, they do them in black and they do them in, like, a red snake skin in the sale on Topshop. But I've worn these a shit ton and I did end up buying them in the black painting. But the white ones have been like one of my most favorite pairs of shoes or boots of the year. The next item is this Chloe bag. So this was an uber massive treat for me this year. I'm not really one for buying designer things. I feel like this is like a blogging, bloggers, YouTubers thing is must own a zillion designer bags. I mean, it's nice having a designer bag, but 
I, I really, I, I really feel designer items for me personally are like a one, one a year, if that, like thing. Um, they're a massive treat. I can't afford to buy <laughs> loads of designer stuff. Um, I love Chloe bags. I really want another one now. This is the backpack. Um, it's, I actually rarely wear it as a backpack, if I'm honest. I always use this strap, but I, I also really like how these dangle. Um, I think they look cool. But I got it in the grey with the gold, silvery gold metal on it. And it's very spacious inside. I can fit a shit ton of stuff in there. And it is my most worn bag. I took it when I went to Canada and like wore it the whole time. It is a bit dirty around the edges here. So I might see if I can get a suede cleaner and try and clean it. If not, contact Chloe myself. Like, hi Chloe. How you doing, girl? Yeah, how do I clean my bag? But yeah, see if I can get it cleaned professionally or something. I was introduced to the world of Rab by my boyfriend and my Rab coat, even though it's not particularly stylish, I bloody love my coat. So, I mean, I would show you my favorite jackets of 2018. There are a few ones that I've worn a lot. But I'm gonna be real with you. My favorite coat has actually been my Rab. Rab is like um, an outdoorsy clothing equipment wear. Um, I particularly like this one. They are an investment because they are so good. This isn't waterproof, it's water resistant. Um, and okay, this next bit does make me feel a bit like eh, and also a hypocrite because obviously I just picked up a pair of leather boots, but it has got down in it. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I thought that these were synthetic down, but they are a mixture of synthetic and real down. So I was like, oh fuck, after I bought it. But that's what makes it warm and so lightweight, but really, really warm and insulated is because of what it's made of. Um, so yeah, I am a hypocrite. I'm walking around in leather boots and I eat meat, but I don't like the idea of down. <sighs> Morals, hey? Anyway. Other than that tricky, like, head fuck of a head fuck, I like it. It's got, um, like, these pulley bits around here. You can The hood is huge. You can wear a helmet in it, apparently. It's got a little bit, a little cap here as well. So it's like a sun cap. And then around the, around here, uh, the, it goes in at the sleeve. It stops the wind getting in. And it actually feels like I'm wearing, like, a top underneath it that is just skimming around my... Because uh, I don't like air and water going in my my um wrists and i just i just i just love it i okay let me know how you feel about this but i really want to make an outdoors dedicated outdoorsy instagram account where i take pitch outfit pictures of all like this sort of shit um and all my favorite like walks or, or like pubs i go to or hotels i go to on my excursions because I feel like I want to put it on my main Instagram account because my main Instagram account is mostly to do with fashion and beauty. I'm not saying that this isn't stuff. This isn't stylish. This isn't like the, the fashiony stuff that I'm kind of interested in, but I'm still interested in this. And I don't really, I sometimes think, oh, I don't know if I should put that on the, it's not going to fit in with the theme and like my overall like look of bleh, whatever. I, I, as a hobby, I feel like I want to explore it and put it somewhere else. Would you be interested in following that? Let me know. So, Rab, spot on, love it. So, the next one is Maybelline Superstate Matte Ink Lippy. I got it in, I have, I did get sent a bunch of these and I used them all up <laughs> because I love them. Like, this ages ago, Maybelline sent me some. I recently repurchased two. So I got a red one and I got a nude one. And this is honestly, I alter between these two at the moment. I haven't been using anything else but for all year these have been my favorite lip products so the ones that i've got with me right now i've got the nude is seductress and the red one is pioneer and i'm gonna tell you this this shit is so stays on like mega like it will last all day actually a chore to get off at night time like i have to proper scrub my face to get this off it can deal with like having coffee eating drinking i mean to be honest it, I, I would have to eat an awful lot <laughs> like have a massive burger or something to notice a little bit of like fading on the middle it's also kiss proof slightly snog proof like, you can have a little bit of a snog all right this is me picture and like thinking of snogging but after a while it can transfer and then it just like 
like this well because I'm smoking but yeah it is generally this is the longest lasting lippy like staying put I'm not budging lippy that I own and I absolutely love it then my hair so this hair isn't mine I got it done at the ext extensionists in London near Clapham Junction station that's where I get off and I feel very grateful that they have helped me restore my confidence in in my hair because my hair went looking from this fucking badass bob where I went from purple to blonde and the amazing Tom did it to me having a few issues with it later on where I was having breakage and stuff. There was a fair few different factors as to why my hair was breaking, but it happened. That is the risky business of going blonde and it resulted in me feeling really shitty about myself and my hair and I didn't know what to do. So I decided to get extensions and go long again. Um, and what it's just basically enabling me is for my hair to grow out. As you can see, my roots, my roots are very prominent. It's getting there, like these bits down here are growing. I don't have much hair on the front of my face. I think this bit of hair like literally goes like that and then down. So I am growing it. I have to fill out these front bits. They haven't damaged my hair at all. Like um, this is my second set now from the extensionist. And the first time I went and got them taken out, like my hair had grown, it was still thick, and yeah, I'm just very grateful that it has filled me with confidence and I feel a lot better about myself. My rings, my jewellery is so important to me. My great frog collection that I've collected over time. I have two newbies from this year. So I have my, my small Kodo, Kodo, and I have the Eagle again, because I lost it. Uh, Mark bought me it. To replace the one I lost um but I wear these every day pretty much about fail if I don't wear the whole set I will most definitely wear I normally go without the two massive ones Mickey but I will most definitely wear my rose my mini skull and my eagle and my moonstone I love them so much um I've now got my first great frog necklace I want to get another one <laughs> I'm obsessed, but they definitely are a favorite of mine. Then on to my perfume. Now, this perfume has got me the most compliments ever, but it's a bit luxury in terms of, it's an expensive fucking perfume. I was sent this, very grateful for it. The trouble is now, <laughs> is when this runs out, I'm gonna want another one, but they are expensive. They're like 170 pounds for a bottle. I'm not sure if it's 175 pounds for this bottle, this might be more cheaper, I'm not sure, but it is basically Le Labo, Le Labo The Noir 29, and it is the most, oh my God, it is so good, and I get so many compliment, compliments for it, like, honestly, I've had people like go, whoa, mate, you smell insane, what are you wearing, and, I, and people have actually bought it, uh, or got it for Christmas and stuff. It reminds me of like having a fancy time in London or being around really fancy girls, but in a nice way, like in a, all having a really special time. But it also kind of reminds me a bit of LA because they have a little, I went to the La Labo store um, on Abbott Kinney and that just kind of like freedom, like nice thing, sunshine, a little bit of a mixture of London in there. And this is like a me smell. It's quite like strong and got a kind of masculine sort of tone. Really good. Anything with like noir, I'm guaranteed to like it. Eyeshadow palette that I've really enjoyed this year has been the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glow. Not my heat palette. Heat palette. Well, actually, I love my heat palette. I do love it. I love it because it's got all the warm colours like uh, that I love. It's got some really nice metallic shades. And it's got black. A black. That's all I want for a palette. It's meant to have a black in. Sometimes you want to do a smoky. So if you've got you like, all right, I'm packing. I'm going somewhere. I'm only going to take one palette with me. It's got to do, be able to do a variety of different things. Like, we'll do a, like a nice little day look into a nice deep d night look. And I feel like a, a black is an essential for a smoky eye. Or something a bit darker. But then it's got all these like lighter colours over at this end for if you want to be a bit more subtle. Like, product wise, that is it from the song. The other thing was my boyfriend. Mark, you are great. I love you. Thank you so much for making me trust in people again and reassuring me that there are nice people out there and that I do deserve to be treated well. You are amazing. You make me laugh. You are very, very caring, very generous, very thoughtful. You remember things that even I forget about myself. Um, and thank you for being a yes person with me. And thank you for um, 
just being just being my biggest fan supporter and up for anything you great but please stop being on your phone as much <laughs> so now i'm going to move on to all the other shit that i've really loved in the year that that i mean they didn't make this cut for the song not because i don't like them but it's just lyrically this other shit worked better this is a fairly later discovery of the year but most definitely going to be favourite of the year, but also favourite of this year, but Bare Minerals, I love L'Oreal Matching Minerals at one point in my life, they changed the formula, and then we broke up, Bare Minerals came along, introduced itself to me, and I'm in love, this stuff does concealer, foundation and powder all in one, just like the matching minerals from L'Oreal, and I'm down with that shit, like, if I can do my base in two minutes, I am... Well, you're laughing, aren't you? I get a full coverage. If I need to top up my face when I'm out, it's fine because it doesn't go cakey. Um, if you get a fallout or like, you know, like when sometimes when your mascara likes to like sag a bit, cover it up, take a little brush out. I love this foundation. I have a set of headphones here. These are from Bang & Olufsen. Bang & Olufsen. These are these little pods. And Jesus Christ, these things are a game changer in, in, in audio, right? They are so good. And they're so portable. So you charge this case and then the case keeps them charged. So if I'm like traveling, I should put this little case in my bag. I don't lose it because it's all contained. And then they come out. It's like a nice, it's satisfying because that's magnetic. They're really good. The audio is amazing. But they're also touch, touchy. So I can change the volume. I can skip a song. I can pause by like tapping the right one. Different. So like one tap is to pause two taps is to skip and then you hold it down to turn the volume up and then you hold this one to turn it down if you tap the left ear it goes into like an ambient kind of mode well, what it will do is it'll stop the music but it will kind of amplify the no noise around you so you can hear what's going on so for example if you're in the supermarket and then you go to the checkout i'll tap my ear and then i can hear what she's saying to me i got them in like the pink rose gold um i know they're bringing out some more colors but these are so good. They are around the kind of two, 180, 200 pound mark, which I guess is expensive for headphones, but they are amazing. And the brand is renowned for its quality. So they are worth it. I use Olaplex pretty much all the time. I use the Olaplex one and two for treatments. They're like the hairdresser ones, which I sneakily got. A friend of mine managed to get, who's a hairdresser managed to sort me out. I use their shampoo and conditioner as well. Olaplex Brout shampoo and conditioner. But, oh, that is a favorite of mine. But I, I need to talk about this, which was introduced to me by my hairdresser, Tom. He's in, this stuff is insane. So this is for Nola, no yellow. And it is the best silver shampoo I've ever come across. So, you know, I've been dyeing my hair, doing hair dyeing videos and stuff on YouTube since, well, I've been dyeing my hair for a long time. That's how I started YouTube. And there's been so many silver shampoos that I've tried out, but nothing beats this. The last time I went to the salon and Tom was about to tone my hair, before he toned it, he washed it with this. He rinsed it out and was like, I don't have to tone your hair because this has done it for me. And I was like, okay. And he was like, I'm not trying to get out of a job, but look. And I was like, shit, man, you're so right. So I actually have washed my hair with this recently because I felt like my hair was looking a bit too creamy, a little bit too brassy, or brassy, but a bit too yellow. And to you, you might not notice it, but to me, I'm like, shit, no. It, it is significantly... <laughs> less brassy or creamy yellow than before and i'm really digging it so if you've got like stubborn yellow hair or stubborn brassy tones this shit is the fucking dog mitchum mitchum deodorant the best i used to suffer with like bo and being sweaty and having deodorant that would work for a bit but then i would always go oh not too fresh this stuff i've got so many of my friends on the mitchum train because it is the best deodorant. It's a bit, you feel a bit like, you know, a mum, middle-aged lady buying your Mitchum, because it's not, oh. But it is legit the best deodorant. It's long lasting, 48 hour protection, and you don't feel, I never feel skanky anymore. It's so good, this one's flower fresh. Everyone loves Mitchum, Josie uses it, we love it. Cup of coffee face scrub from Lush. Love this shit. This is like, I do it once a week, when I've got a bit more time in the morning, I'll put it on, I'll leave it on for ages, and then I'll just scrub it off, and it gets 
all the dead bits, all the dry skin. It makes me feel more awake because it smells like coffee. And it's just great. And it come, I got. I always feel like this is a good for pamper. I like to use it on Mark as well. He loves it. Oh, I do love that. Oh, it makes me feel all comforting. Because I know that when I put it on my face, I'm having a bit of a me time pamper. So that's a really comforting smell. Um, really love it. Because... You know, my, my, my skin routine's not that extensive. I don't go to town with it. So, a bit of this, followed by a bit of moisturiser and some oils, just to get any shit off and inject some moisture into it. That is my that is my jam. That's what I do. So, a cup of coffee, face and body mask. Really good. And um, I mean, I might start using it on my legs as well, because my legs get a bit dry at the bottom. So, I'll give it a go on my legs. Apparently, uh, if you put it on your bum, that's supposed to be good. We have got Zaflora. Now, you know who we're going to blame for this. If you don't know who she is already, then where have you been? Mrs. Hinch got the whole nation on Zaflora and using minky pads. I don't see what's wrong with that. But I saw some people kicking off about Miss Hinch, and I got really annoyed about it. Because I thought, you know what? If she is, like, encouraging people to be more productive and how to clean and showing hacks and tips and products that are great and it's, it's positively impacting people, then there is nothing wrong with it. If she loves cleaning, leave it to clean. But she got me on the Sephora train and I love it. So I bought a box from Amazon. This is um, the, the Christmas range. So this one's warm cinnamon and I use it, I, I, I dilute a bit in a little bowl or something and I use it for cleaning. Or the other thing I do is I put boiling water in the smaller compartment in my sink, a bit of that in it. Put all my sponges in it so they're like in there, like soaking up the disinfectant and sort of cleaning themselves. It makes the room smell really nice. I also use that water to clean the worktops down. Most nights I do that. I just love it. I like the linen smells and like the clean cottony smells, but at the moment I only have this one. But the flora, so good. I feel like I'm literally like exposing my laundry. Dirty laundry. What's that phrase where you talk about your life and they call it? Anyway. This is my favourite. It's what I use to wash my clothes in. Bold 3-in-1 in the lavender. And, oh, you know when you smell something and it makes you go, oh. When I wash my sheets, man, and they're fresh after using this, I am like this. I'm literally like, Josie, come here. Oh, smell my sheets. Oh, and then, then it's really hard to get out of bed and wash my clothes in it. I also use the matching fabric softener which is in the lavender i know it's three in one and it technically has it in it but i always use a bit extra okay so this year has been the year of me discovering vikings uh vikings is a tv show that i really really like which is based loosely on which is based on the legacy of ragnar lothbrook who was a viking legend um so it's about him and his life and also what happens when he's not around anymore. I watched that to fill a Game of Thrones void and I very, very quickly fell in love with it and I'm obsessed with it. It has also positively impacted me in the sense that it has woken this interest in history and I'm now like really into history and Vikings and learning about the past. Don't know what, I mean, it's not like I never was not interested in it, but more so now I've been watching the show because it is based on truth. Like, fuck, this shit happened. I want to learn more. We did even go on a trip to York to go to the Viking Centre <laughs> in the summer and look around. And I was like, we need to come back here because this is super interesting. My favourite films of the year, I really, really enjoyed um, free, free Billboards which is the movie about uh, a mum that puts these advertisements, well, not advertisements, these messages on free billboards. That's based on a true story. I'm going to say Isle of Dogs as well. I'm that did come out this year, didn't it? Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs. Where's Anderson? Uncle Wes. Amazing film. All stop motion. Absolutely insane how it was made. Production, top notch. Great cast as well. Really, really love it. I mean, I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan, so when he brought that out, I was like, what music that I've really liked. I discovered Billie Eilish this year, the end of this year, 16 year old musical genius with a voice of an angel. I think she could resurrect the dead with that voice. 
Also, it was the year that I discovered Way's Blood. Connor introduced me to Way's Blood. Connor also introduced me to Always, which again, one of my favourite bands of all time. So Connor's very good at introducing me to artists. Uh, Way's Blood, one of my most played albums. Um, f- front seat, front row seat, front row seat. I recently bought the vinyl of that as well. Um, amazing, amazing music. Another artist, Daniel Romano, the end of this year, country dude. Hell yeah. But that was it. Let me know your favourites in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. If you aren't new here, hello, friend. Thank you. I will see you guys soon. Farewell.